Hi everybody, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George and uh, my co-host Nomi is not here today, so we're going to do, we're going to explore our cause or will from the perspective of morality. Um, and basically what that means is like, well, if we don't have a free will, a personal free will, then it's not really accurate to say that we have a personal morality. And what I mean by that is like, when we, when we um, talk about morality, we're basically talking about um, right and wrong and, and personal responsibility. The idea is that like, you know, we do certain things that are good and we expect God or the universe to reward us for those things. Or, um, or, you know, if we do things that are bad, we expect that the universe will punish us. And, um, you know, that does tend to be the way it works. But the thing is that um, it's not up to us whether we do right or wrong, good or bad. That's the idea. Um, basically, when we, um, when we do anything, any moral decision that we make is based on, um, on, our, on our understanding, for example, of the morality of the issue. Take, for example, um, let's say a young boy. He's raised in a culture where stealing is, for some reason, you know, um, done. It's done. It's promoted. Adults, you know, everybody, you know, um, teaches that. And so you have a young boy who's, who's raised in this culture, and all he learns is that, no, stealing isn't wrong. Stealing is right. Okay? So this young boy, when he becomes a man, he steals, and, and he, um, he considers himself to be right in doing so. Now, you have another person who was raised in a different background, um, a young girl, and she, um, she believes stealing is wrong, okay? And then she grows up to be an adult and doesn't steal in general. Okay, now, then the question becomes, well, like, is, is the first person, is, is the boy who becomes a man and steals um, to be blamed for, for his um, stealing? And is the girl who becomes a woman to be credited for not stealing? Well, again, if, if, we, if we believe we have a free will, we, we'd say yes. But to the extent that we understand that we don't have a free will, we understand that that boy um, could not have done other than to steal. Because, you know, he, as a man, when he steals, he thinks he's doing the right thing. And, and, and everything that... Um, that's what he was taught. That's, that's what he was taught. That's how he was conditioned. And, and with the woman, the same thing. The woman con was conditioned to, um, to think of stealing as wrong. And so she doesn't. So the idea is that like with morality, you know, what we do, you know, the rightness and wrongness of it, um, it's, um, it's not up to us. It's up to how we were taught. If we're in a certain culture, we're going to believe that certain things are right and certain things are wrong. If we're in a completely different culture, we're going to believe that perhaps other things are right and other things are wrong. You know, and we don't get to choose what culture we live in. We don't get to choose what parents we have, how the ethics they instill in us, what books we read in school relating to morality. So that, that is a good way to understand um, you know, why we, we don't have free will and, and how this relates to um, our moral decisions and how, you know, essentially it means that we don't, we're not morally accountable. You know, again, we're puppets, robots, automatons, whatever, we do good and, uh, and evil because we're either lucky or unlucky. And, that, and so, like, basically the idea is, like, when we do good, 
then um, you know the the proper uh, re response is to be grateful, to feel grateful. And now, if we define good as that which creates happiness, that's the reason we would be feeling grateful. Okay, because like we're doing something that's going to benefit us and and ideally benefit the world around us. Okay, so I want to go over something we we spoke about in the last episode on a different episode um because it's important um morality all our relationships our best friends our spouses our children our parents our brothers sisters you know all the people around us we we interact and what we say and how what we do our morality toward each other is really based on our understanding of morality and our understanding of, of whether our wills are free or causal um, to the extent that we fall for this illusion of free will that we believe that we are you know the captains of our fate that we can decide whatever we want then when somebody does something wrong to us when um and whatever it is I, I i prefer not to get into specifics sometimes um we um when we have a free will and somebody does something wrong to us we tend to blame the person okay we we attribute moral accountability to that person and then well, then we say to ourselves, well, if the person did something wrong, the person deserves to be punished. You know, uh, that will breed like maybe anger, judgment, you know, righteous anger toward the person. And you know that that, you know, that more often than, than not doesn't help our relationships and more often than not hinders them. So, so the idea is, and let's turn everything around. Let's see our interaction with the people around us as having been determined by a causal will, you know, by the causal past. Um, then all of a sudden, you know, that person who did wrong to us is no longer our enemy per se, is no longer um, our adversary, is no longer, you know, that subject um, about which we believe deserves um, some kind of punishment. You know, I don't know if the grammar of that was right, but <laughs> if I had a free will, it would have been. Um, you know, that's the idea. Like, when we understand that we don't have free wills, we have causal wills, and people um, don't behave as we think that they should, whatever, then fine, we might say to ourselves, all right, it would be nice, it would have been nice if the causal universe of God, if whatever, would have compelled that person to act differently, but it didn't. And you can't blame, you know, a robot, a, a puppet, a, an automaton. You can't blame a human being without free will for doing something that, that the person was completely compelled to do. You know, you can't logically do that. And again, that, that helps with the relationships. That helps us to be more understanding, more compassionate, more forgiving. Not just toward others, toward ourselves. When we do bad, we do wrong things all the time. That's almost like the definition of being human. We make mistakes. You know, we have, you know, high goals, high aims, high ambitions. But then we have, like, a part of our nature that, um, <laughs> that will, you know, do things that are not in our best interest and in the best interest of others. Um, okay, let's, um, let's look at this, um, from the perspective of how we might treat a very young child, let's say a two-year-old. Okay, a two-year-old does something, does something wrong. What do we do? We don't, you know, generally, most of us generally we tend to be understanding toward the two-year-old. We say to ourselves, well, the two-year-old couldn't have, you know, couldn't have done any better. Um, he, she doesn't know any better. You know, at two years old, 
they don't have the experience, they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the maturity, they don't have the information. You know, the, 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 the mental abilities sometimes, the emotional abilities, you know. And so we, you know, we don't attribute free will to these, this two-year-old. You know, we see it, we say, this, this two-year-old, you know, does not have a free will, it can't do, you know, whatever, um, because it's, it's limited by, it's, it's like, you know, limited education, limited um, mental processes, emotional processes, etc. So what happens? What happens? Because we recognize that the two-year-old does not have a free will, we are compassionate toward that three-year-old, you know, two-year-old. We say to, say to ourselves, hey, um, that two-year-old is not responsible for spilling that, um, that drink, for doing whatever the two-year-old may have done. And we're much kinder t toward the two-year-old. Think about it. We're much kinder, much more compassionate, understanding, forgiving, accepting. And that, that is why morality is so important to this question of whether human beings have a free or a causal will. Because when we come to understand that we don't have a free will, that free will is an illusion, then we can apply that same understanding, that same compassion, that same reasoned, rational compassion that we apply toward the two-year-old, toward everyone in our lives, toward ourselves. Now, it's not going to be, you know, without challenges, you know, and even those, how we address those challenges, incidentally, is just as compelled as anything else. Like, for example, let's say somebody um, does something that um, we are interestingly compelled to dislike, that, that we, we're, gonna, we're compelled to see it as wrong. And um, what do we do? You know, like, if we operate under a causal will perspective, we say to ourselves, all right, the person's not to blame. But, you know, let's say this, let's say the person kept, keeps stepping on our, on our um, toe or our foot or something, right? <laughs> you know, we can, that can't be the end of it. Sometimes we, we basically have to take action, you know, even though we know that the person is, does not have a free will, is completely compelled to do or not do what, what they're, they've done or haven't done, you know, that, that we consider a threat, um, we still have to take um, action. And what I mean is like, so yeah, if, and sometimes this is like, you know, if somebody's coming at us with, with a gun and wants to kill us or something, and, and we, we see that, we might say to ourselves, yeah, all right, the person doesn't have a free will, but neither do I. And, and interestingly, the, the causal past might have us, you know, try to kill the person first, whatever, you know, a self-defense. So the basic idea that I'm trying to present, if you get a, Get some kind of camera shot change here. Um, I don't know if my, my director may be, not be there. Who knows? There we go. All right. Um, so the idea, the point is that um, when we when we understand that um, that we have causal wills instead of free wills, it doesn't mean that either other people or we have license to do whatever we want because we don't. Okay, one thing that, that's important to remember is that, um, and this is a guess on my part, it seems to be the way things work. Um, when we do what's right, when the universe compels us to do what's right, the universe rewards us with some kind of pleasure, either presently or, um, or in the future. When we do what's wrong, uh, the universe will um, will punish us in some way or another. So the idea is that you know, even though we might be um, compassionate <laughs> towards someone you know who's doing wrong, you know, seeing him like a two-year-old, that doesn't mean we absolutely have to be a doormat or have to be vulnerable to other people's um, aggression. <clears throat> and again, it doesn't give us license to say to ourselves, "Well, you know, I don't have a free will, so I can do whatever I want." No, it, does, it just doesn't work that way. Um, and that's very important to remember because a lot of people who, um, who kind of see the reasoning in why we don't have a free will, why, why free will is an illusion, 
but can't completely accept it, a lot of times they're, they're afraid. They're afraid, well, my God, we give up this illusion of free will and we will have chaos. You know, it will be an end of civilization. Um, but no, it, it won't be because, again, we, um, you know, we're hedonic creatures. We seek pleasure, we avoid pain. If, if somebody's, you know, doing something wrong and, um, you know, again, we may not blame them for it, but we'll certainly have to take some kind of action to minimize the, um, the impact of that wrong. You know, the same, same with us. So, so, yeah, we don't really have to um, be afraid of, of civilization collapsing by our understanding that, um, that free will is an illusion. In fact, the benefits of understanding our wills is causal, um, I think, far outweigh the, um, the detriments, the potential detriments. Um, because again, um, our whole, think about this, our whole civilization, our whole judicial system, our whole system of business and economics, is based on the illusion of free will. Completely. It's like, you know, somebody doesn't, I mean, all right, with the criminal justice system, there is an understanding of um, extenuating circumstances. <clears throat> there is somewhat of an understanding of our causal will. For, for example, like if somebody does something wrong in our criminal justice system and there is a mitigating factor, let's say that the person was distraught, let's say the person was ignorant of, of certain um, knowledge. Uh, the person had some kind of disability. The person um, was inebriated, whatever. You know, there, within our law, it takes account for that, and it, it would might minimize a sentence or just you know completely um, uh, undo it. And again, that's a, that's a that's a recognition of causality. That's a recognition that this person you know couldn't have helped doing what he did. Um, in, in business, it's the same. In business, um, we, we ascribe morality to each other, you know, morality based on a free will. And some of us um, do much better, you know, at, um, at whatever than others, you know, at um, whatever it is that, that, um, that might be our business. And, um, and our current free will perspective has us basically um, reward that person above another person who wasn't as lucky. Um, and, you know, that, that basically leads to the kind of competition, economic competition, that... Um, God, if you want to get very real about it, is the, the main engine for climate change, for global warming. You've got this, this competitive culture, you know, that like, you know, I of my own free will did something good and I, you know, I deserve to, um, to be rewarded for it and, and to advance this cause based on it rather than, than saying that, well, no, um, what I did... Um, wasn't of my own free will. It was just like out of fortune, out of luck. And my, my personal well-being is not any more important, certainly not at all more important than the, um, the fate of civilization, you know, over the next several decades because of climate change and global warming. So, um, so yeah, so, I mean, this has, this has very profound, profound um, implications and um, and effects. Um, when we understand that um, the morality is um, is not a personal thing, that the morality is causal. In other words, like if you want to talk about something being moral, the only thing you can talk about um, that's moral is the causal past or God. You know, whatever it's making us do what we're doing. That's the only moral thing, you know, that exists. We're not moral um, beings as human beings because we're compelled 
to do whatever moral or immoral act we do. You know, we're just like, for example, it's like a hand. This hand might, might do something right or wrong, but we're not going to attribute responsibility to this hand. We're going to attribute it to, to, um, to the brain that, that leads it, okay? And naturally, by extension, then we're, we're going to not attribute responsibility to the brain that leads it. We're, we're going to attribute it to actual the causal past. You know, that's the, that's the most precise understanding of this. But the idea, you, you can see how, like, we, we, we're like hands, and we think we're the brains, Okay, and, and when it comes to, to morality, um, the, the more we can, um, the better we can understand that, um, that everything is causal, that, that, you know, there is no personal morality, the, um, the less judgmental we will be. Think about, like, think about some of the, um, the major tenets in, in the, the major religions that, even though they, let me tell you something, even though the major religions don't get this question right, they get a lot of questions right. I mean, basically the idea of religion tends to be about morality. Sometimes, you know, um, it doesn't live it up to its ideals. But there is within most, if not all, religions, this idea of judgment, um, that, that sometimes it's not good to be judgmental per se. We have to differentiate right and wrong. But to be judgmental means to be indictive, to be, um, to kind of blame. And so this whole concept of, of non-judgment, you know, whether it be Christian, Jewish, Islamic, whatever, really has its basis in the idea that judgment doesn't make sense. You know, if, you know, if somebody is doing something and you're judging them, you know, based on what they're doing, um, and they don't have a free will, well, then the judgment is erroneous. It's misplaced. You know, so, the, so you, could, you could conceivably judge um, the causal past, God, reality, because I, I tend to do that. I say to myself, well, if I was God, I would not have created pain. And naturally, if there's no pain, there's no evil, because evil is what creates pain. Um, in other words, yeah, if, if there was no pain, there, there could be no evil. So, um, so then I say to myself, well, um, well, basically, if if the causal past, um, you know, is doing things, we, we could say to ourselves, all right, well, that that's wrong of the causal past. The causal past shouldn't have done that. And, and again, I, I say that, but then I have to, you know, I have to like check myself and and, and ask myself, well, is the causal past? Um, not also compelled. I mean, does the causal past have a free will? Think about it. Does God have a free will? Um, my first guess is no. I mean, no, no. This, like, all right. We're getting in, we're going to, we've got about almost four minutes. We're going to get into something that's important um, relative to this. And the idea is that, like, within our reality, there are a few things that transcend our um our ability to understand and i'm going to go through this quickly and then apply to what we're talking about infinity in terms of space it's impossible to know whether space goes outward infinitely and then stops or, or that it stops at some point okay either prospect is illogical the same goes for um for eternity eternity going to into the per eternal past and eternity going into the eternal future okay you know, our minds cannot wrap themselves around the idea of something, you know, just going on forever and ever, just like it can't wrap itself around the idea of something just stopping, of everything just stopping, you know. So, all right, so within that um, context, it seems, whoa, sorry, it seems that... Um, but yeah, it's impossible for us to know um, whether the universe that's compelling us is compelled itself or not. You know, that's, that's an open question. I don't know. Um, maybe I haven't explored it um, deeply enough. It's hard to say. But, but, you know, 
the, um, the reality that, that rings through is that, fine, the causal past may have a free will, may decide of its own accord what, what will be and what won't be, but certainly we, we won't. You know, we can't do that as human beings. Okay, so, and, and it's because we can't do that that morality is not properly applicable to us as human beings. In other words, we're neither moral nor immoral. We are, we're, we're actors. We're actors on the stage. We're like, we're doing what the causal past compels relative to morality. If, you know, sometimes it has us do something that we consider both in the present and in the future to be good, other times not. But it's just not up to us. <laughs> um, okay. Um, yeah, if we're, you know, our world is at a very challenging time. Um, climate change is with us for several decades at least, and it's going to be extremely challenging. Um, the, the global economic situation is going to be challenging. We've got a lot of challenges, and to the extent that we understand that, um, that we do not have a free will, then we will understand that we're not, you know, quote-unquote, morally responsible, and then we can be much more compassionate and non-judgmental and understanding toward our world. And that, I think, will be the way we solve these problems, because the free will perspective causes blame and causes... Um, you know, moral judgment, which causes a lot of competition and conflict and aggression. Whereas the causal will perspective, um, while it may have certain elements of that, you know, it's different. All right, that's all we have time for. <laughs> Thanks for watching.